Okay, so it's probably about two months ago now. I was tagged by Precambrian Lullaby to do a two stories tag. Now, I'm not much of a storyteller myself. I grew up in New Brunswick, and quite honestly, I don't know very much of the folklore for some reason. Now, I know little stories, but they'd probably take a little bit too long to tell in a tag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to relate one personal story, and then I happen to have this book here. I've been looking for this for a while. Uh, Timeless Stories in New Brunswick by Peter D. Clark. If you're ever in Fredericton, New Brunswick on a Saturday morning, go down to the market. You can get a copy of this. Anyway, I shall start with uh, a little anecdote of my own, and then I'll tell you the story of Levi Grant. So, my story has to do with the time I, the biggest catch I have ever made while fishing. So when I lived in New Brunswick, there were four or five fishing holes I knew of within easy reach of me. And any summer day when I wasn't working or in school, I would be down at one of those holes without fail. If it was a nice day, I'm there. So it was one such Saturday and it was at quite possibly my favorite fishing hole ever. I was fairly well known in the area. And I swear on every second cast, I was catching a fish, a bass, somewhere probably about this big. So anywhere from 12 inches up to about 18 inches long. Just having an absolute blast. Because smallmouth bass are one of the best fighting fish you'll ever catch. So... Anyway, I was there for about an hour, and this uh, father and his sons and daughters come down, and they're, they're fishing too, but mostly they're just having a blast just watching me, because I swear, as I said, every second cast, fish that long. So I make one cast out, don't cast anything, or don't catch anything. And I said, you know what, guys, I bet you, I bet you on this cast, I am going to catch a lunker. So I let out a little bit of line so I can reach the far side of the bank, which is where all the, all the big fish were, seen to be hanging out. And I go back, and I cast forward, and don't you know it, I let out just a little bit too much line, and the treble hook catches me right there. Well, didn't lie, got a great big lunker. Of course, being the avid fisherman that I was, I didn't think much of it. I had a swivel hook in it. I just reached back, undid it, put another lure on, cast out, fish that big. And I kept doing that for, oh, about half an hour before, you know, the shock finally wore off and that actually started to hurt. And at that point I figured, you know, I should probably go to the hospital and have that removed. So I think I've told that story on Blog TV a couple of times, either in text or out loud, but... Now it's on YouTube for everybody to hear. And now, for the second story, I'm going to tell you the story of uh, Levi Grant. Let me just find the page here. I think it's page 35. Uh, where is it here? Oh, page 28. Levi Grant. Levi Grant was born in Cloverdale, New Brunswick on August 27th, 1925. Few men alive knew the woods better than Levi. He, like his father and brother, is a legend in his own time. His skills of guiding and basket making are legendary. In his younger years, he guided George Frederick Clark on many a fishing trip on the Miramichi. Levi followed in his father's footsteps, leaving school at a young age. As a young man, he went into the woods with a team of horses, felled forest, and drove the logs down on the rivers. He has made a life from what he has learned in the woods. He has been a timber cruiser and a forest warden employed by J.D. Irving. This year, 2004, will mark 28 years that he has been employed by J.D. Irving. Today he patrols by truck, but in days gone by, Levi patrolled the stretch above Juniper, the Alder grounds, up onto Beetlebrook by canoe. He claims that he could come down that stretch night and day in his 26-foot-long canoe that rides in about 3 to 4 inches of water. He's made the trip thousands of times or so. 
Some of the locals tell me that Levi could pull his canoe and roll a cigarette at the same time. It is, in fact, it is a fact that few men around could match Levi's prowess in pulling and handling a canoe. He also knows how to use his back and hands in making a living from the woods. Levi is legendary for his basket making abilities as well. Over the years he has crafted around 9,000 baskets. He made his first basket at age of eight and learned the craft from his dad. In 1960 Levi sold fish baskets for a buck apiece and backpacks for three bucks without straps and five bucks with straps. Watching Levi at work the basket making looks like child's play. Each basket is made from ash. There are tricks to all aspects of weaving the baskets together to get a quality finished product. There are elements like shaping, picking the right thickness of the ash, and weaving the wooden stitches to an exact tightness. Over the years, Levi has fashioned laundry basket, fiddlehead baskets, fish baskets, picnic baskets, and his most popular backpack baskets. Any type of basket imaginable, and the odds are good that Levi has made one. Levi says the most important element in becoming a basket maker is a certain level of patience. He claims without patience you won't make it. Over the years, Levi has sold every basket he's made, mostly in New Brunswick, but also throughout Canada and the USA. He gets callers on a regular basis and keeps a list. If you order a basket and say that you are picking it up on a certain day and you don't show up or call, the odds are good you won't get it because there are customers stopping regularly looking for any type of Levi Grant basket. Today Levi either stamps his basket, baskets or signs his name on them so you know when you are getting an original. If you are lucky enough to get a basket in 2004, prices range from $30 for a fish basket and up to $80 for a backpack. One of his best customers over the years, none other than Arthur Irving, who has bought around eight to nine hundred dollars worth of baskets each year for about 20 years. He has given a lot of those away as gifts. About nine years ago, Levi was patrolling Moose Lake area in, sorry, about nine years ago, Levi was patrolling the Moose Lake area in May. He took a sick spell in Eldon Govan, drove him to the Bath Hospital. The doctors called the family and said that Levi wasn't going to make it. One of the members, one of the family members called J.D. Irving and he sent a plane to the McCain Hospital and transported Levi uh, to the St. John Hospital where he recovered. It is evident that the Irvings like and respect Levi. This summer, 2004, both Jack and J.K. Irving stopped in to pay a visit. Levi says that each Christmas he receives a nice Christmas present from Arthur and J.D. Irving. On August 1st, 2004, I stopped in for a visit with Levi and spent a couple of hours talking with him. Of course, he couldn't pass up the opportunity. Uh, of course, I couldn't pass up the opportunity of purchasing a few baskets he had on hand. Levi assured me that he still enjoys making baskets, but the weather was getting too hot and the wood was drying out too fast. His basket making was done for the summer, and in fall he would acquire another cowhide for making straps for certain baskets. If you want a collector's item from New Brunswick, pick up a Levi Grant basket. Anyway. That's the tag. Um, anybody who sees this and wants to respond with the two stories from the area where you grew up, feel free to respond. I'll talk to you later, guys.